Hello and welcome back to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from C. Stevens who wanted to see how to do wall and floor squishing with platforms. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so first let's get started with the platform logic. So I'm just gonna click on this side view one. I'm gonna go in here, this is the wall left and right. And this is gonna take a little bit of a different setup. This can easily be just your platforms group right here. You wanna make sure that it has wall detection against the player, of course. And then you will also wanna make sure that the player is pushable or is yeah pushable so you do not want this one checked all right and that's really the setup for it now the important thing to understand is that this thing is moving to this wall right here and when it touches the wall it's going to to fire now if you notice i have this one pixel if i go out like this it's one pixel underneath where this tile would be you can see it's just one pixel up or one pixel down. And the reason why is that if you have it level with the tiles and it goes all the way over, if your player is standing right here on this tile, just a little overlap right here, it will trigger the death. And so you don't want that. So a real easy way to just get around that is just make it one down wherever you're going. Or if it's you know level this way and for some reason you're walking on the ceiling, just put it one up. And that's really one of the, the things to pay attention to. I forgot to mention with the player, you want to make sure that it's platform group. This can squish objects. We'll talk about this later. The up and down one is a little bit different in the setup. And so, yeah, that's really all of all it is. You're basically moving the object however much you need. This could easily be a changeable on scene. And then you can go out here, place the object, and then say how many counts you wanted it to be. So you could easily have one object be adaptive to wherever you need it when you place it. So this one would be 96. If I was to place another one, I could say this one would be 180 or something like this. And so this one would be 180, this one would be 96. So that's how we can make those objects adaptive. But let's just go down here for a second here. And once it's unconditionally, so it uncondition unconditionally changes back to here, and then it moves it back. So you'd want this one accessible as well if you were trying to do something like that. And then after it's unconditional, and the way that I'm doing it unconditionally is in the move object down here, I'm selecting stop object action. And what that's gonna do is it's going to stop any link from running until the movement is done. So this link, even though it's unconditionally, it will not run until the logic's done. And so this one's just a simple back and forth, and that is exactly what it's doing. You can see in the animation here, it's just the wall detection is the whole thing. And it's just very simple. Uh, we can actually get rid of this one for this. So this is just the, the only one. All right, so that was the left and right one. Now let's go to the down and up. And let's first off go to the objects. So you can see that this first one is called can hit. And so it is a can squish objects group. The second one, is a platform. So it's just the same as the left and right. So one is a platform, one is a can squish. And the reason why is we'll see how the player hit reacts. The reason why is what I was saying at the beginning, which is where if this one comes down and then as it is going up again, so it comes down and is going up. If you're pressing the movement, so if you're the player right here, pressing the movement, trying to wait until it's open enough for you to run under, it will snag it and it will throw it will throw a hit and so that looks very bad when it's on its way up and your player dies so how to fix that is we just have to juggle the groups if we could change wall detection and it just inside one object we could have one object but unfortunately we need two objects for this this is so this is one is going to be a can hit again it's a can squish object group and what this is doing is it's doing the the typical movement down right and then it is just waiting unconditionally. So once the movement is done, because I'm using the stop action thing again, then it's going to change to a wall up down can't hit, all right? And then it's going to start in the eight tiles and then can't hit. So then it's gonna go to here and this one is just a normal platform. So it won't register to the player in the link condition. And then as you can assume, it starts right here, it starts to move up, and then as soon as it hits the top, then it changes to a can hit. All right, so that makes sense. So now let's go into the player. 
and we can see that real basic setup right here. But the big one is, is a common action that is the die squished common action, all right? And so if we go in here, we can see that I just have some detections going on. Now, you could have both of them at a check, but you will run into instances where it will register true and it's not a true death. And so I don't like to take that risk. So I make sure that everything is very specific. So the first condition is if you're touching a tile wall on the right side or with your white right side of the wall detection. So the player's right side of the wall detection is touching a tile wall. And the player is touching with the left side, a platform group. Okay, so that could be anything. That could be, you know, whatever's in your platform groups. So if it's touching the right side of a tile wall and the left side of a platform group, boom, that's a hit, that's a kill. Now, then we have an or right here. So or it could be do, doing these two things because I have an and right here. Or, and this is just the opposite, the left side of a tile wall with the right side of the platform group. Or again, and this is for the up and down one, we're touching the upside of a tile wall and we're touching the downside of a can squish object. And remember, this is uh, the one where it transforms into where it actually can hit the player. And then the, and this could be reversed by the way. So this could be platform as well. And then the other one that you would change into the non platform one could be a can't squish object or something else. So this is just the way that I did it. But um, yeah, so the, if you're hitting the bottom side with the player's wall detection of a can squish, then it will die. Or the last one is the one that is happening in the sample where you're touching the bottom of a tile wall and you're touching the top side of a can squish object. All right. And really that's it. The die method that I used the, to make it Mario like is I just did a basic jump. I ignored movement at this point. I moved to layer one, which is going to be the topmost layer. That's how I can jump off the screen kind of thing. And then I just disable every layer but one. So the player is the only thing that's moving. And I like stuff like that. That's how I do any of my game over stuff anymore is I disable or pause menus and stuff. So you can see I have above layer right here. If we get the player layer, you can see that what I have on the player layer. And then on the above layer, you can see that I actually put the tiles above the platform to look like it was the platforms were under them kind of a thing. And then background layer is just that, yeah, that background. So yeah, anyway, I hope that this makes sense. And I hope that you can learn something from this process. If there's any questions, comments below, Seamforms Discord, we'll get you figured out. With that said, I'll see you at the next video.